basically today if you uh, really look at the global energy scenario significant emphasis or focus is on decarbonization right okay because of uh, the global warming in that context there is a need to actually offset conventional fossilized fuels right with renewable fuel when it comes to renewable fuels hydrogen is something which is really being spoken of as a very uh, key player in the entire uh, sphere of decarbonization because hydrogen per se is an energy source but it doesn't contain carbon there are only two natural resources available which can produce hydrogen right one of the resources is water the scientific route for generating hydrogen using water is electrolysis take water pass current through this and then you get uh, hydrogen and oxygen right that is one way of doing it the other way of doing it is biomass mm -hmm. now biomass is a natural resource which grows by means of photosynthesis mm -hmm. wherein carbon from atmosphere is taken in and it is fixed in mm -hmm. the form of solid structure for biomass the broad formula is c1 h 1.4 O point six. Okay. C H O complex. Uh -huh. So this is how it actually pans out. So biomass also has embedded hydrogen in it. Across the globe, lot of uh, emphasis is on using water as a source for hydrogen. But in this lab, uniquely, I must say, we are attempting at using biomass as the source for generating hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So what exactly we do is, we take uh, woody biomass. This is one sample which is basically cut wood. Mm -hmm. So this is directly woody biomass which has been sized, cut wood again from industrial packing. Mm -hmm. So if you go to Pena, a lot of machinery comes in the form of wooden cartons. Right. That wood also is waste. So this is just cut wood like that. Yeah. Then when you really look at bamboo, just like we grow crops for food, bamboo is also being grown for the purpose of right. energy. Mm -hmm. So we have this bamboo. These are direct woody resources. Mm -hmm. Then. If you really look at agricultural residue after the crop is harvested, mm -hmm. you still get almost 50% by weight the yeah. residue which today farmers are generally burning. Portion of it is actually going for fodder, but a good chunk of it is going for burning. Right. Now that uh, residue can be converted into some solid form like this, uh -huh. which we call as pellets mm -hmm. in smaller dimensions, or we also call it as briquettes in mm -hmm. larger dimensions. Uh -huh. The basic idea is any of the agro residue, if it is in this particular form, mm -hmm. can be converted into a mixture of gases mm -hmm. through our process which is known as gasification process. The agro residue is being taken up through a conveyor, is being fed into this particular reactor which we call as a gasification system. Okay. So, Linguistically itself, gasification means converting some solid into gaseous form. Bio residue is fed into this reactor, it gets converted into gas. Right. Now this gas contains components like hydrogen, carbon monoxide, methane as the primary combustible components and it contains carbon dioxide and or nitrogen. Uh -huh. Subsequently, it is taken through what we call as a cleaning and cooling system. Okay. Okay. Wherein the gas is subjected to some sort of a cleaning process. The gas contains, as I said, carbon monoxide, hydrogen, and nitrogen, uh -huh. uh, methane. What we need is pure, uh, pure hydrogen. Okay. So for that, we make use of a process called as uh, swing separation process. We take the gas that is generated from the gasifier, uh -huh. pass it through a compressor. Okay. okay? Once we pass it through a compressor, we pass it through our PSA. This is what exactly is our swing separation system. Uh -huh. This actually acts like a particulate filter. Okay. okay? So just like we use uh, carbon filters for uh, treating water right. to remove all the sediments, Got it. it also has some similar kind of a philosophy. You pass a mixture of gases through this, what it, come, what it gives out is pure hydrogen. Sure. So, what we are doing essentially is we are taking biomass, putting it into this reactor and we are getting pure hydrogen from this particular reactor. Mm -hmm. Now, once that hydrogen is generated, as a test case, we are operating a fuel cell. It's a proton exchange membrane fuel cell, uh -huh. which takes in hydrogen and oxygen as the two primary reactants sure. and it generates electricity. Okay. So you can see water that is being operated. This is being fueled using the electricity generated from uh, a fuel cell. 
Now, when we really look at it, this fuel cell in a miniature version will get integrated into an automotive like that. And we are now talking about complete green mobility. So, the idea is you have biomass, convert it into hydrogen, use that hydrogen in a system like this, which is a fuel cell and you can operate your automotive. So basically sure. the entire transport sector can get converted into green mobility. Right, right. Now, this is one specific use case. This hydrogen can be used in petrochemicals, in pharmaceuticals, mm -hmm. in steel industry. So this hydrogen per se becomes the primary driving factor for decarbonizing the whole carbon-based ecosystem. Uh -huh. On a statistical front, India has got about 250 million metric tons of excess bio residue. Uh -huh. I'm specifically mentioning excess because India generates 750 million metric tons of bio residue. Out of that, 500 find some alternate use. So we are not going to compete with whatever already has a value, whatever is excess, which farmers are burning, right. so on and so forth. We intend to collect that, convert it into briquettes or densify the biomass take it through an ecosystem like this yeah. and make hydrogen available for decarbonization. Right. So this lab is all about that. We are having about uh, six IPs for this. Mm -hmm. Six IPs have already been awarded. Different components have got IPs. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are also uh, defending our IPs in Europe and US. Okay. On this particular, we have filed for the IPs and it is still getting uh, defended. Okay. So these are all in-house. And one uh, USP of this technology, if I can say, is uh, completely Atmanirbhar. Uh -huh. Not a single nut or bolt is imported. So we will not be held hostage to supply chain logistics. Other people have thought about doing it or is there any limitation? This idea didn't come there to their mind or they feel that there is some lack of such uh, requirement or resources. What, why exactly are it, others not putting effort in yeah. this? It's, it's, it's a very good question. See, gasification per se is not very new. It took its genesis in the Second World War, especially in Europe. Because of the sanctions, they were completely starved of oil. Uh -huh. Okay. At that point of time, in Germany, these kind of gasification systems were there, which used to generate gas, and they used to be supplied to internal combustion engines. Mm -hmm. So they have used this for mobility purpose. Got it. Got it. But what we have done is, this particular configuration has got certain unique features mm -hmm. and we are also introducing oxygen and steam into this particular gasifier uh -huh. which enables us to generate close to 100 grams of hydrogen per kilogram of biomass. Okay. So statistically, this is the only reactor which can generate hydrogen at that particular quantity. Uh -huh. So there are competing technologies but the yield of hydrogen is the highest from our gasification technology. Mostly whenever we try to generate energy or transform one thing to another, there is always some byproduct, some some residue, something which is pollutant. Now I am seeing that this gasification gasification is the major component Correct. and there Correct. is the major conversion happening. What loss or what residue is there any is there any harm to I would like to just show you that. It's a very good question as a matter of fact. Biomass, once it undergoes uh, a conversion, uh -huh. it gets converted into this kind of char. Coal, yeah. Okay? It's basically charcoal. Uh -huh. Now the beauty is, this charcoal is what generally is used as a soil remediation agent. Uh -huh. I mean, if you really look at our farmers, why do they burn the residue? Right. One of the reasons is to dispose that. But there is a more scientific reason behind that. When you burn off the residue, what remains is ash. Mm -hmm. Now this ash acts like nutrients for the next crop. Right. Okay. Now when we use this char, uh -huh. we can just powder it and then disperse it in uh, fields. Mm -hmm. That is the simplest utility. Sure. Now, this char has got what is called as very high surface area. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, this char can find use in applications like filters. Mm -hmm. So for example, all our RODM water filters have got a char bud as its first level of filtration. Mm -hmm. So this finds use in that kind of filtration. Uh -huh. So this char has got a has got an economic value. Sure. Worst case, you can disperse it in field and it is not harmful. Sure. So sure. this is the only residue coming out of this. For every kilogram of hydrogen that is generated, uh -huh. we are fixing one kilogram equivalent of carbon dioxide. So all other technologies actually emit carbon dioxide in one or the other way. This technology fixes 
carbon dioxide. So per se, we are or this technology is a carbon negative technology. In terms of conversion, there should be some energy being spent in gasification to extract hydrogen. That energy to the output. How is that ratio? In terms of uh, actual monetary investment, is it worth investing compared to the other alternatives that we are still trying to figure out? As I was telling earlier, there are only two sources of uh, hydrogen. One is water, yeah. the other one is biomass. Yeah. Now, when you look at water, okay, it is uh, taken through the route of electrolysis. Yeah. And that electrolysis route requires today approximately 60 kilowatt hour of electricity for producing one kilogram of hydrogen. If you visit India Energy Exchange, wherein you buy and sell power, uh -huh. round the clock renewable electricity today is being sold in the range of about six rupees a kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that makes the cost of hydrogen from electrolysis immediately at the rate of 360 rupees per kg. Production cost only. I am not talking about the investment that right. goes into the infrastructure. Right. Okay. Right. So production cost is 360 rupees. Now using this technology, the production cost will be in the range of about 160 rupees. Mm -hmm. okay. So the production cost is almost or less than 50 yeah. percent of the competing technology. When it comes to capital expenditure for a 100 kg per hour plant, mm -hmm. 100 kilograms of hydrogen generation per right. hour plant, mm -hmm. only the electrolyzer will cost you in the range of about 30 crores. Uh -huh. Plus, you have to add the cost of the solar plant also. Uh -huh. So it may go up to 45 crores. Uh -huh. Now, in, in the same range between 45 and 50 crores, this kind of plant also will come in. So on CAPEX part, it is almost on par. Mm -hmm. On operating expenditure part, we are almost 50% of the cost. The major advantage is when we are looking at bio residue, okay, it's not that I'm going to go to the farmer and pick up the residue free of cost. I would like to pay it yeah. back to him. Yeah. So, you know, the farmer then gets right. price for his crop as well as for his residue. Okay. So, the lowest start of the society can be lifted up, lifted up in terms of yeah. economic uh, growth. Yeah. So, that way, this particular technology is environmentally benign yeah. and the right solution for Indian sector. Yeah. or Indian scenario where agriculture still forms a major base. One more thing came to my mind. So please, are we please. in IIC using this uh, produce electricity? Are we using it or it is just experimental <laughs> as of no, now? <laughs> what exactly happens is, it's a, it's a very uh, pertinent question I must uh -huh. say. Feeding electricity into a grid uh -huh. is generally happens or is permitted when it is run on a continuous basis. Uh -huh. But for us, this is an experimental facility. Okay. So today I want to operate it X condition, tomorrow I want to Got do it Y condition. Okay. So for me, this is a facility wherein I want to do as broad as parametric analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I would not right. behold on my experiment to the grid electricity requirement. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So what we do is we generate hydrogen and then we just flare it. Okay. Yeah. So that's how we actually manage it. Okay. Okay, yeah, thank you, sir. I mean, I was not expecting that I would be getting to see such a thing. I was just roaming around. Uh, but it, is, it was still uh, very, very nice and interesting thing for me to thank see. Thank you so thank very you much. Thank you for your time. I took a lot of time for no, me. No, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you.